before we go on to edible economics, oh. can we just quickly recap um, uh, the the sort of central a couple of the central arguments? Mm. Twenty three things they don't teach you about capitalism, um, <clears throat> which I've been enjoying. Uh, you can see that we got an incredibly sort of dog eared copy of this book, oh, um, which came out probably in 2010, did it? About 10 years ago. Yeah, 2010. Um, yeah. And it's dogged because um, it's one of the only books that my 22 year old son has actually read. <laughs> he loved it and he's not really a book reader. Um, it's it's such a lovely, it's so beautifully written, it's fun, um, <clears throat> but it's very radical. You know, mm. it's a polemic at the same time. Now, um, I suppose at the heart of it, if this idea, you know, that you take on the free market um, and you say, well, free, it sounds like a nice word, the free market. Um, you know, think, we like things that are free in different okay. ways. I'm a free person, you know, yeah. we don't like slavery. Um, but it's, a, not, it's not really a misnomer. It's just that it doesn't actually exist. <laughs> That's right. Uh, That's what they say. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the point is that, that uh, well, first of all, when you say the things like free market, free trade, you know, you have to ask uh, the free for whom, you know. So that, uh, for example, when the, 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 in, the, in the 19th century, the weaker countries were forced uh, through, you know, the euphemistically named uh, the gunboat diplomacy uh, to sign all these uh, treaties with the uh, strong countries in Europe. So Asian countries, Latin American countries, they were that, uh, forced to sign these treaties that, that, uh, which uh, among other things that uh, forced uh, them to practice uh, free trade when their partner may or may not that, 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 that practice uh, free trade. Yeah? So the free trade actually that, that, that was uh, imposed through on free means, you know, the, but that, that, that's uh, another kind of a contradiction in terms because uh, the, you know when you say free trade it simply means a uh, freedom to trade yeah it's a uh, freedom for the traders uh, it's not about other people yeah so uh, first of all uh, you have to uh, be careful uh, to uh, know what this uh, freedom means uh, for whom but more importantly that uh, you know that uh, when i uh, said that uh, rather boldly in the 23 things i uh, they don't tell you about capitalism that there is no such thing as a free market i was uh, actually that uh, uh, questioning uh, the, this idea of free market as a natural order because that uh, all markets have some underlying regulations you know I mean, the, the, there was a time when the, you could buy and sell people the, the, in the market the, through slavery. Now that is banned. Yeah? I mean, there was a time when the, the, the child labor was the, the, the widely the practice uh, in this country. And when the, the social reformers uh, tried to regulate it, uh, economists uh, the, the, the were outraged because uh, it, the, the regulation would undermine the very foundation of a free market economy, namely the freedom of contract. Yeah? So mm -hmm. the argument was, uh, you know, that these children want to work, uh, these people want to hire them. What is your problem? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As if uh, these uh, factory them. owners uh, that uh, kidnap the children and that uh, use them as uh, slaves. Yeah? So yeah. all markets have uh, that kind of uh, ethical uh, foundations, and therefore there, there's uh, no scientifically defined uh, free market. Yeah? So it's the same, I think, wasn't it, with uh, working hours, the, the idea of working hours, there was the Working Hours Act, the 10-hour-a-day act, um, mm -hmm. in the sort of early to mid-19th century, which means that before that, <laughs> you know, we're, Absolutely, people working, yeah. you know, they, 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 we want to reduce the working week to 60 hours. Yeah. Same thing, the, the, not, not necessarily the economists, but the, um, uh, I don't know, the mill owners, the mm -hmm. big capitalists, they said, you know, but people want to work these hours. It's ridiculous. It's going to destroy our industry if you uh, impose this law. Absolutely. But luckily, there were enough kind of uh, there were there were enough sort of you know reformers, philanthropists, whatever, um, in, in Parliament, and the, the law was enacted. But exactly as you say, it, you know, nothing about this is natural, is it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that uh, you know that uh, in the early 19th century, the average working hour per day of uh, other British workers was uh, 15 hours. Yeah? 
so that uh, for the, for those people, the, you know, ten hours was uh, a dream. But uh, but then you know that a lot of people thought uh, people should be allowed to work as long as uh, they want. Uh, there was a famous case uh, that in the U.S. Supreme Court in 1905 when the the, the state government of New York introduced uh, the, the restrictions on the, the working hours of uh, the bakers uh, to the 12 hours because uh, the typical workers in the bakeries in the, the New York at the time, but uh, the work uh, the 15, 16 hours. And uh, the Supreme Court actually struck uh, this uh, law down on the ground that uh, people have uh, the, the freedom to work as long as uh, they want. You know? Really? But, yeah, what is uh, acceptable the market practice? You know, what uh, that, that should uh, be given priority? You know, for example, do we give uh, priority to freedom of contract or children's uh, right to have a childhood and education? You know, all of these things are the essentially ethical and political decisions, and economics that uh, really cannot tell you the, where to draw the line.